Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to make a first person shooter in Unity and welcome to episode 32. So this time we're going to carry on with this little barrel here and we're going to create that explosion as well as some sound effects and we're going to take a quick look at our pause menu again to prepare for the next episode. Now creating the explosion effect on this actual barrel is going to be done using particle systems and we've done particle systems before so we understand the concept of how they work. I'm going to go into a couple more things with particles now so we can see them react a little bit differently and how we would want them to change depending on whatever the particle system is going to be. For example, uh, this is an explosion, so we just need it to occur once and quite whoosh. That's the best way I can describe it, whoosh. So let's start by going down here to the barrel and clicking on broken barrel and we'll go with the uh, in fact I'm going to set it as active I'm just going to check which one is the bottom one so broken barrel 2 that is going to be the one where we add the particle system so let's right click let's go on effects and particle system perfect so over here as we've done before, we're going to set a couple of things. The duration is going to be fairly small. So obviously, you would have a longer duration for bigger effects, shorter duration for a smaller explosion. I'm going to start with probably half a second, maybe a little bit less, so 0.4 maybe. That'll be the duration. Uh, we don't want it to loop because we just want it to occur once. There's going to be no start delay. And the lifetime, we're probably going to make it last roughly two seconds and it is kind of relative to the duration but I'll explain a little bit more of that as we go on to it. Start speed I want it to be slower than five so we could just try one for now and see how it reacts and next as we go down start size uh, we want it to be bigger because we at least want some kind of large explosion so let's have this as maybe four for now. Uh, we don't need any rotation start, we don't need flip rotation, so they can stay zero. However, we will change the start colour to a bit of a, an orangey, fiery colour maybe. About there maybe. And let's go further down, we don't need a gravity modifier, so we just want it to go as it were. Uh, I think that's pretty much it, it's all we really need here. So emission, let's click here. I'm going to change this to 10 times its amount. So I'm going to change this quite high. So let's have 100. Now, rate over time obviously means a bigger, brighter explosion. That's how I can describe this here. So if we have if we had 10, it wouldn't be quite as grand as 100. So I'd like it to at least be something visible. So I'm going to have it as about 100 for now. Uh, going further down, the next thing we're going to change is the shape. So ultimately, we're going to have it as a sphere because we need it to be in this general area. We don't want it going in one direction. Uh, and I don't actually mean that boy bound. So 0 0.5 for the radius, so we'll shrink it a little. But the radius thickness is also going to be shrunk by half. Uh, there's plenty of other things to play around with here, but I don't think it matters too much at this point because I say the idea of what we're doing is just creating a short explosion. So the only other thing that we could really play around with and make it look a little bit different is going to be the color over lifetime. So if we select color over lifetime right here, tick, and we'll start. Um, in fact, we'll take up here. We're going to have it as full alpha, and by the end of it, we'll have zero alpha. So, in fact, we'll click on this now, and then we'll take the alpha to zero there. Perfect. So we've got this effect of color over lifetime. We start here and end up here with zero alpha. So it'll kind of dissipate in a way. The uh, last thing we will actually do, I think, is let's add in some size over lifetime as well. So let's take size over lifetime and change this. And I think we'll start off quite small, uh, quite large, I should say, and finish off uh, very small. So literally one down here. So next thing we'll need to do is bring in the texture. So let's go to our textures folder. And, and tutorial 32 here, you can get this asset on the website. Head over there. 
Downloads and Assets and the FPS series. And drag and drop, explosion onto the particle system. And at this point, I'm going to F2 and rename and have explosion. Um, in fact, I'll just call it part, explosion part. So let's head down here to the uh, changes. And if we go here, shader, particles, and um, let's have additive soft for now. So we'll just see how this reacts. So the idea of what we want to actually happen here is when this object becomes active, its pair, its child object, in this case, the explosion will also become active. So I'm going to quickly test this out. So I'm going to turn broken barrel off. So as the um, whole explosion doesn't occur. And then let's quickly pick up some ammo, pick up a gun and see how this looks. I would recommend playing around as much as you can with the um, particle system itself because there's so much to find from it. So cool, that was pretty nice. Now, what you could also do is put the same explosion in the top of the barrel so you have two kind of explosions. So I'm going to re-enable this, click on this. So you can see how the explosion worked at that point. Um, what we might do, uh, although I think it'd be kind of a bit silly, I was going to think about unparenting this at the point of explosion, but it kind of wouldn't make sense. So let's have duration maybe a bit shorter, so 0.2, and let's just see how this changes. Uh, let's have looping, and it's not going. It's not going to let me, is it? If I press play, oh, do you know what? Best way to do it, I think. Best way I'm going to do it is actually turn off broken barrel, turn it back on, and it still doesn't do it. Okay, so let's keep it as point two, and let's quickly try this out. After this, we're going to add in some explosion sound as well. So it actually goes boom when we uh, shoot it. So let's see what kind of effect this has now. Yeah, it's not too bad. I'm quite happy with that. I think I'm going to add it to the other part of the barrel as well. So hold control, press D and drag it onto broken barrel two. And next, let's add in that audio sound. So audio and drag and drop explosion 001 great thing is there's no need for scripts at this point because we can literally just drag and drop it onto these objects and turn off looping so play on awake is fine you could use a script if you wanted to give you a bit more control but it's entirely up to you so i'm going to drag and drop explosion 01 onto explosion part and uh, same again so scroll down we can see Play on awake is ticked, which is exactly what we want. So now let's see how this sounds. I get the feeling this may be a little loud, so prepare your ears, folks. I haven't quite tested this out. Yeah, that was quite loud. So I'm thinking, because it's doubled up, because it's playing two at once, if we turn the volume down on both, so 0.4 and 0.4, and let's see how this sounds. Fingers crossed. It's not quite so loud. So this is one of the fun bits about playtesting. You can test for ages and get all kinds of different results. Nice. Okay, so I'm quite happy with that. Uh, although one thing I'm not happy about yet again is the lighting. I, I change my mind so much when it comes to lighting, but again, I think it's all down to how you guys want to have your game. So directional light. Mm, no, I think it's all going to be down here, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Point two. Let's try changing the source to a color. Uh, I'll keep it like that for now. It might do. So I'm going to save my scene there. Now, I did talk about the pause menu. So what we're going to do is go to our canvas right there. 
and pause menu. I'm going to set it active. And we're going to make a couple of modifications on this now. So what I'm going to do is bring the pause up to there. Uh, I think I'm going to have a font changed on it. So we're going to customize this pause menu a little bit more, I think, rather than just be the way it is, just a bit boring. Because what we're going to do is make this a little more interactive. So we're going to have, for example, duplicate the resume game, and let's rename the text to respawn. So hopefully you've probably guessed what we're going to be doing in the next episode. And once again, hold control, press D, and we'll call this one Quick Game. So at the moment, we've not really done too much in the way of um, scenes and whatnot, because at the moment we have just a couple of scenes, credit, game over, level one, splash screen, main menu. It's the next episode which we're going to have a little bit of fun with these, and I wanted to get this pause menu at least looking something resembling more like a pause menu than just a game object. So let's quickly rename these now. Uh, respawn button and quit game button. Now, please feel free, absolutely feel free to have a go at getting these buttons working. But if not, the next episode is going to be out fairly soon, I think. And that's where we're going to have a lot of fun because we'll be doing things like an animated main menu. So if I save that scene and quickly head to the main menu, that's all we've got. There's, there's not a lot to it. So we're going to do something a little bit more fancy with this. And we're also going to do linking, so i.e. scene to game, with a little bit more oomph to it. And we're also going to <clears throat> look at respawning. And I think respawning is one of the biggest things that most people ask for. So the idea is, if something goes wrong, you can pause the game and then respawn and start again. And I think that is the, going to be the main focus, and I'm looking forward to doing that with you guys. So let's turn this um, pause menu off again. And I'm just going to press play. And quickly just make sure that the um, good old explosion still works. So feel free, like I say, to play around with how that explosion works. And... Oh, probably sort out glitches and bugs in the next uh, level as well. Excellent. So, that's pretty much the explosion done. And we can also use that explosion to create things like grenades as well, which we'll probably get onto at some point. Um, but yeah, until the next episode, guys, thank you very much for watching.